record. All right, so tonight's going to be a little bit different of a study group. It's going to be basically a code along um, the whole lesson. Um, and the end goal is to actually have you build and deploy um, a machine learning model um, online to an actual website that you'll be able to visit and use. Um, this will come in handy, especially for your capstone or even your previous projects that you did or product projects in the future. Um, basically, if you can have an actual um, web hosted project that you can interact with that um, companies you're applying to can see as well, that will look really good for you. Um, and it's not that difficult to get set up. So this is something I made. Um, I showed some of you this already. Um, it basically uses NLP to generate fake um, song lyrics. So you give it an inspiration word, you choose the originality, um, you generate the lyrics here. And it uses um, a model that was built in Keras, actually two models, um, to basically generate the lyrics and then determine what percentage of each, each artist um, contributed to those lyrics. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and this was all done with something called Flask. Um, it's a web development framework that uses Python. So you basically build websites with Python. You can use everything that you use in Jupyter Notebooks, which makes it great for deploying machine learning models that you built in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, so we're gonna be using that. And then we're gonna be hosting it on Heroku. Um, it's basically a cloud platform. It lets you host um, apps basically for free, as long as they're small enough, which ours will hopefully be. Um, and so that's why you made an account. So we're going to, let me try to move this up. So we're first gonna build a model, uh, make sure it works locally. Then we're going to um, delve into the Flask part and basically build the HTML, make sure it looks good locally. And then we'll push it up to GitHub and we actually can connect our GitHub with Heroku so that it pulls everything directly from there. So it's really easy. Um, I'll go through step by step. You'll wanna just follow along and enter the code. And if you fall behind or anything, I'll make sure to upload the saved stuff at the very end. So let's go ahead and open a Jupyter Notebook. And I'll wanna change the title here. So what we're going to be working with is a pre-trained model that I already found that is basically sentiment analysis for tweets. It was trained on like millions of tweets. It has maybe like six different sentiments it can detect. And it basically gives you a percentage um, or basically a probability of those different um, moods or sentiments. Um, and you can also just take the highest one and say, okay, this tweet exhibits this emotion the most. So we'll just call it like tweet mood analyzer. All right, so the first thing we have to load the model. So we have a JSON file and we have our weights and we also have a tokenizer. Since this is NLP, we need basically the tokenizer that was used to create it. So first we're going to import from keras.models, import model from JSON. So that'll let us load our model. Um, so let's first load the JSON. So we'll do model JSON equals open. And then if you're in the folder that um, this lesson uh, material is in, you should have it here. Um, it's just moodmodel.json. And then we're gonna read it. And then off of that, we wanna get the JSON. So that will um, be done with the dot read. And then we can set our model equal to model from JSON and just pass in our model JSON. All right, so that will load the model. Now we need to load the weights onto the model. So we do model dot load weights. And then the weights are just called mood model dot h5. Basically all Keras um, weight files and stuff have the extension h5. So if you ever see that, that's what that is. All right, so that should load the model and allow us to view a summary and see the layers that it has. Might take a second, it's a large model, but you'll see in a second here. Let 
Mm, okay, there we go. All right, so this is the model, not a ton of layers, but you're gonna see some strange ones in here, spatial dropout. It's basically a variation of the dropout layer that you've used. This bidirectional is actually bidirectional LSTM. It's a variation of LSTM um, layers. You don't have to worry too much about what that does. Um, it's just what they chose to um, build the model, but you can kind of see the parameters and see the size of this. So, you know, over 6 million parameters, this probably took, you know, a couple hours to train on a good PC. Um, so it's nice to be able to just take someone else's weights and already trained model and load them in. And from this, you could actually train it more on new data or you can just use it for predictions. So to be able to make predictions using it, we need to also load the tokenizer. So we're gonna import pickle because it's saved as a pickle file. And then we're gonna do tokenizer equals pickle.load and then we need to open it. So open, and it's called mood tokenizer.pickle. And then we want to read in the bytes of it with the RB flag there. So that will load in the tokenizer. And then just to check that it loaded in, we can check the word index, which again is just a list of all the words in it. And then um, basically their appearance rate um, in the data set that it was trained on. So you can see we have a ton of words in here. We even have some emojis because they're tweets. Um, so a ton of stuff in here. And it basically keeps going on. All right, so we have our tokenizer, we have our model. Now we could technically pass in a tweet and see what kind of mood it predicts for us. So to do that, we're gonna need NumPy. And then I'm also going to create a list of the labels. Um, these are just the ones I know that it ends up predicting in the order that they predict in. So it's anger, disgust, fear, guilt, joy, sadness, and then shame. So those are the, I guess, seven um, moods that we'll be detecting in, in tweets. So then we wanna create a tweet. Um, you can enter anything you want here. Um, I did this one earlier. I am feeling on top of the world. So that one we would think probably would be joy. So that gives us a good test. Um, so now that we have the tweet, um, basically in string format, we first need to encode it. Um, so turn it into numbers according to our tokenizer. And then we also have to pad it um, because the model was trained on um, a max length of, I believe, 256. Um, so we'll have to pad it to that length. So to encode it, we do encoded tweet equals tokenizer.txt to sequences. And then we just pass in the tweet. Then we create the padded tweet by using, I'll we'll probably have to import this. Let's see. So we'll need this here. All right. I can't see um, what my tabs are called because um, there's this like green box because of the screen share. So that's fun. Um, but OK, so we need to import from this import pad sequences. And that should let us use it here. Pad sequences. And then we pass in the encoded tweet and the max length, which is 256. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run that. And we got an error, let's see, max length. Oh, it's just uh, all together with no underscore. Okay, so we have it all ready to be passed into the model. So now we can just do model.predict. Um, and we're actually gonna do proba because we want the probabilities. So we want you know, the percent chance that it's an angry tweet or that it's a sad tweet. Um, and then we just pass in the padded tweet and we can see what we get. It'll take a second to predict it. So we got an array of seven values. Each corresponds in order to these different labels. Um, so what we could do is just do np.argmax of this whole thing. Um, let's see, will that work? Yeah, so that tells us that the fourth one, or index four, has the highest. Um, we can see 
right here, 0 0.959, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's a joy. Um, so basically the way we could get that then is to just do labels and then pass in that index. And so that tells us that it's most likely to be a joyful tweet. Um, so then another thing we can do to see just the uh, percentages here in line with the actual labels, we can do a for loop real quick. So for label and probability in, and then we're gonna zip two lists together. So our labels and then these probabilities. So labels, and then we want this model.predict probabilities. And then you'll notice this is like an array that's within an array. So we actually need to take the first element of that to go inward one set of, one set of brackets here. Um, so that'll let us loop through. And then we can just do print our label, a colon, and then the probability. So that gives us a nice breakdown of the different moods. Um, you know, it's not always going to be one mood has such a high percentage. It might be closer between two. Um, so that could be interesting to look at. Um, so we basically tested out our loaded in model. Um, we've seen that it mostly works and we basically have the code to do all these predictions and the pre-processing to load in a tweet once we have the text. So the end goal basically on our um, app is going to be to let somebody type in a tweet and for us to tell them what mood we think it displays. All right, so before we move on to the Flask stuff, does anybody have any questions on this? Did this all load correctly for everyone? Yep. All right, cool. All right, so for this part, we need to go to GitHub first. So go to GitHub, just like the home page here. And then we're gonna make a new repository. So it's just on the home page and then this new button here. All right, so we'll have to give it a name. So maybe like tweet mood analyzer again. So we got our name, we'll want it to be public. And then you'll wanna check this box, initialize this repository with a readme. Basically just saves us a bit of um, stuff to do. So you'll check that box and then hit click repository, should create it here. All right, we've got our repo up. So you'll wanna copy the URL and then you'll wanna open a terminal window. So with that open, you'll wanna go somewhere where you want to have your repo and basically do all your stuff. So I'm just gonna to go to my documents folder and I'm gonna do it here. And then you just do git clone and paste that URL. So this will clone it locally so that you can change stuff and then push it back up. So it'll take a second, it'll clone it. And then we need to go into that folder. So we're gonna do CD and then the folder name is just this here. So tweet mood analyzer. So give everyone a second. This will put us in the folder with all our files. Sorry, Matt, did you make a new repository? Yeah. Just on like GitHub homepage, just click new here and then enter the name and make sure you click initialize this repository with a readme. And that should make it and take you to the actual repo page. There we go, now I can see my tabs, that's better. All right, everyone give me a thumbs up if you've gotten this far and you're in your folder in your terminal. All right, I think that's everyone. All right, so now we need to go to our file explorer and let's see. So it's gonna look different for me. So maybe let me download, um, let me download what's exactly in the folder. So the first step is just going to be to go to your file explorer and find um, 
your folder that you just uh, cloned. So it should have the same name as whatever your repo is called. So mine's tweet mood analyzer. So you just want to have that open in one file explorer window. And then let me go ahead and do this real quick. And then if you go into your um, lesson content, mod six, deploying machine learning projects, um, you'll have this Flask Heroku template folder. You'll actually want to um, open it up and then copy everything in it and move it to your repo folder. So this is basically like a skeleton for a Flask app hosted on Heroku um, to save us some work. Um, and you can basically reuse this too if you do another project in the future. Um, so we'll want all those files there. And then we'll also want to go back up and we want um, our mood model JSON, our mood tokenizer.pickle, and then also the H5 file. Um, so let's see. I think that's called mood. mood model h5 and it should be about 30 uh, megabytes so we'll want all three of those files here because um, we need to be able to access those in the app um, to basically do what we did in our notebook so basically everything but the notebook yep everything but the notebook you could have the notebook there too if you want um, but we're not going to be using it anymore so much except to maybe copy some code out of so maybe keep it open All right, so we have our files there. So now we're gonna take a look at this app file. This is basically the file that does all the Python work for our website. So I'm gonna open it with um, this text editor called Sublime Text. Um, you might have a different text editor. You could download this one real quick, it's free. Um, it just lets me edit the code and this one's nice because it formats everything, and color codes it, so it's cool. So you want to go ahead and open that first. And then in the same text editor, we're going to want to go back to our folder, go to templates, and then let's see. Now we're going to need our home. Why is that not on there? Let's see. Uh, did not get uploaded. All right, so I'm going to upload a file real quick. This one. Templates. Hold on. Hey Matt, do you do you mind upload to our um, Slack as well? Um, yeah, you mean this folder or this file? The I'm file. Doing? Yeah. Um, well, actually, you might be able to just get it here. Oh wait, actually, we don't need it actually because I don't, we don't need that stuff in there. Okay, so let's just um, create a new file. Okay. And then this is going to be our HTML file. Um, so basically to put all the stuff on our website, like where we want it. Um, so we'll just start it off with this and then we want to save it as um, home and then we want it as a .html and you'll want to just save it in the templates folder. You'll see there's other ones in it. The home one just didn't get uploaded for some reason, um, but that's going to be the main one we're working with. So create an HTML file, call it home and save it in the templates folder. How do I create a HTML file? Um, what do you have the app.py file open in? Yeah, um, sub, Sublime 2. Oh, then you just go to a new file and then you can just put HTML, okay. this, and then just save as. Got it. All right, and then We'll just go ahead and put our title on here so that we have something to look at starting off. So H1 just makes 
it's basically header one. So it's like a set size, like big text at the top, and then we're gonna center it. And then we'll just call it like tweet mood analyzer. And then close our tags here. And actually, if you want to go to tools and then command palette and search HTML, um, you can do set syntax HTML and then it will color code things and make it look nice. So that was tools, command palette, search HTML, and then just the set syntax HTML. All right, so that'll have our title up there um, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. So we're gonna save that, save our app.py and then go ahead and go to your templates and You'll want to open, that did not save as an HTML. So we want to do home.html, maybe that'll work. There we go. So when you go to your folder, you should see, you know, the same icon as the other one so that it'll open in a web browser. Um, so with that, we'll want to go ahead and just double click and it should open in a browser. And we have basically the start of our website here. So we have that tweet mood analyzer title that we put. And this will be how we can check um, kind of what this looks like. Is everybody doing okay so far? Any questions? Is this going too fast? Take that as a no if nobody says anything. Uh, I've, I've fallen behind, but I'll just follow along and do it on the video after. Matt, where are you opening file? You're just opening it in a browser? Yeah. Yeah, you'll just want to open it in whatever browser you use. Okay. And I spelled analyzer wrong. Um, when I open it, it just, the same text that's in the file appears instead of like in the, as, as written in the, you know, like instead of centered. Sorry, what was that? When I open the file, the same code is printed out onto the browser page. Oh, uh, like it just says this. Yeah. Um, did you save it as a .html? So like save as home.html and then select HTML here. Yeah, I did. Okay, and then do you like control S or like make sure that's saved. Then go to your folder and you should be able to just double click it and have this come up. Did that work? No. Can I use text edit to do this or no? Yeah, you could use whatever program. I'm just gonna make a new file. Did you get it working? I'm saving it right now. Yeah, I think I'm, I had the same error. I probably got to download Sublime again and saving it as like a, a Word doc, not a text doc or HTML file. Yeah, I mean, did you, let's see, save with encoder, you know? So you did save as. Yeah, I'm on a Mac. So it's a little different. Okay. It shows as a, a browser icon, everything. It's HTML uh, object or whatever. The other thing you could do is just open, um, you could use the about one that's already in here, open that and use that and then just rename it as home. Okay, I'll try that. And that should probably work. Okay, I got, I got it. All right, cool. 
All right, so now we're gonna go to the app.py and kind of take a look at what's in here. So there's already gonna be some code in it. This is kind of boilerplate stuff that you're probably gonna need and that you don't have to touch most of it. Um, so I'll kind of walk through. So we're gonna have imports at the top, like any Jupyter Notebook or Pi file. Um, this stuff here, you don't need to worry about too much. If you end up doing encryption, you'll need to actually set a secret key in your environment. Um, this basically won't really do anything right now. Um, and then down here, you see all these at app.route um, sections. These are basically um, the different actions or pages that we want our web page to load or deal with. Um, so you can see this first one, um, it's dot route and then just a slash slash. So this basically means at the root of our web page. So like when we first go to it, just the home page, it will do what's inside here. And you'll see there's nothing in here except the return and then render template. Um, so this looks in that template folder and then grabs what's ever in it and it'll load that HTML. So this will load our home page. If we wanted an about page, there's this here. Um, if you wanna just delete that now you can, cause we're not gonna use it for this. Um, and then this one down here is for if you wanted to um, basically host um, a text file. Um, we're not going to deal with that either. You could delete that as well. Um, and then these are just uh, error handling and stuff for using Internet Explorer or Chrome to make it like load the page good and stuff. Um, so we're really only going to be working with this one and then we're going to create one more. Um, so the first thing to do is add all of our imports that we needed for our Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to do that right here. Um, so you'll want to probably just comment this so you know, so like import libraries. And now we just need to run down through all the ones we used. Um, so we did Keras. Actually, we didn't do Keras, but our model uses Keras, so we have to have it. Um, and then we also need TensorFlow which is the backend that Keras uses as TF. And then we need two more things that you're not gonna have seen before. Um, it's kind of just what we need to be able to host um, a machine learning file like this in uh, Flask. So we're gonna do from Keras import backend as K. And then from TensorFlow import graph and session. So we'll do something with those in a sec, um, but now just the other things we used. So from keras.models, import model from JSON, import numpy as np, and import pickle, import pickle, and then also that pad sequences um, Function. So from keras.preprocessing.sequence import pad sequence. So that should be all the libraries and stuff we need. Um, so now kind of the next thing to do is to actually load our model and tokenizer. So load model and tokenizer here. Um, and so we're basically going to open the tokenizer file, open the model.json, and load them. So with open, and it's the same file name, so mood tokenizer.pickle. And then we want rb as the read flag here, as file. And then we're just going to set tokenizer equals pickle.load file. So that will load our tokenizer. And then we're going to load the model JSON. So with open mood model.json with an R as the read flag as file. Then we want to set model JSON equals file.read. All right. And then this next part is going to look strange, but it's basically the only way to make this work. So we have to create a global model. Global basically means it's accessible anywhere within this app. And then we want to create a graph object. 
from what we imported up here from TensorFlow. This is all TensorFlow stuff, basically. Um, and then we want to do with graph one as with graph one dot as default. We want to do session one equals session and then graph equals graph one. And then below that we do with session one dot as default. And then this is where we actually load and create the model. Model equals model from JSON. Pass in the model JSON that we got up here. And then load the weights. So load weights, mood model dot h5. And that's going to be all the setup we need. So we imported our libraries, we loaded our model and tokenizer, and then we do this TensorFlow stuff just to make things work on the back end. Hey, Matt, can you give like 10 seconds? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll wait. Sure. I'm probably typing really fast because <laughs> you just tend to do that when you're uh, doing like a code along. So if it's for our own project, we can basically just copy paste this part. Um, yeah, if you're going to load a model, you want to do this. And if you happen to um, use more than one model, you'll want to basically copy this and just add like a two after everything. Got it. And when everyone has this, uh, just let me know the thumbs up or do you guys have like a react button at the bottom? React? Where or some that? kind of, I don't know. I thought I saw something you could do like at the bottom toolbar. React. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah, do that thumbs up if you're ready. That's helpful. Uh oh, yeah. Where's the reaction button? Uh, where the share screen. Oh. All right, so let's look back at our website. Um, so we need to kind of think how we want this to look. Um, so we're going to keep it simple. Basically, what we want is some instructions here, like, you know, enter a tweet. And then we want a box so that they can type in that. And then we want like a submit button. And then once they click submit, we probably want something to pop up here that says like this tweet shows and then whatever mood. So like joy or anger or whatever. So that's kind of the vision. Um, so now we need to basically create that in HTML. So we'll go back to our HTML file, the home, and we're going to add some things. So we're going to add two breaks here just to move it down the, the page a little bit. And then in order to get the, uh, the text, the input and all that, we need to create a form. So we'll do form. And then we're going to add something in here that won't make sense yet, but it will in a little bit. Um, we need to set the action equals this here. So it's going to be URL for analyze tweet. And then, yeah, and then close it in uh, curly brackets. That should be good. And then the method is going to be post. So basically what we're going to do 
we're going to have another route here that will be analyze tweet. And basically this will um, post whatever, whatever we submit in the form to that endpoint. Do we need our um, so close parentheses in there somewhere? Um, nope, this is actually fine. It looks weird, but this is kind of just the syntax for Flask and HTML. You'll usually see the double curly brackets and then just, oh yeah, we, we do need that actually. Good catch. <laughs> Um, but it's usually double curly brackets and then stuff in here. Okay. All right, so then you'll want to indent over. Um, so within the form, um, we're going to want the center just to look nice and we'll do H3 to make it kind of big and bold, but not as big as the, uh, the title. Um, so this is going to be our instruction text. So you can just do something like, please enter a tweet below and then close your brackets. And then we'll do another break just to space it out. And then we need to do our input box. So this is going to be centered as well. And then it's input. The type is going to equal text. We need to give it an ID equals tweet because we're going to actually use the ID to reference it um, back in our pi file. And then we'll give it a name as well called tweet. And then we're just going to close that center. Then we'll do another break. And now this will just be our button. So we'll do center, a button, and we'll put an ID on it, analyze, and then we'll just have the text on the button be analyze or analyze mood, whatever you want. And close the button tag and close the center tag. And then that's everything for the form. So then we close the form. And then we're just going to add some breaks at the end to before we get to the actual um, showing what mood we analyzed. So I'll give everyone a second to catch up on that. Matt, how did you check to see that it was working? Like when before when you had the just tweet mood analyzer? I, I don't. I don't um, so are you using Sublime Text? Yes. Okay. And you have, or you're on a Mac too, aren't you? So you probably want to do what they did and just open the about okay. file and then just save it as home instead. So just rename it basically, um, but use that file, enter your stuff in here, save it, and then you'll just want to open it in a browser. So like my init defaults to opening with the browser. I'm not sure if it defaults on that on yours. You might have to like right click on it and do open with or whatever. So I'm opening it and I can only see tweet mood analyzer, only the the big title. Oh, you're opening it now? Yeah. Like after you added this? Um, let's take a look here. Did you see so did it? you Make sure you save it. Yeah, so if you're in this, you can do file save or control S, or it's probably a different shortcut on Mac. Yeah, it did save. Did it work now? No. Um, I can only see the title. Do you want to share your screen real quick? Sure. Wow, shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, and then go to your uh, HTML file. Oh, this is another tab. Sorry. Uh, let me share my whole desktop. So this is my HTML. 
Okay, and then, oh, I think it's it's not the right file. Um, so go to File and then Save As up at the top. And then do add .html. And then make sure it's saved in the templates folder. And then try opening it. Oh, that's the one I was. Oh yeah, I think it was moved. Place. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Cool. Yep. All right, everyone else good? No, my button's not showing. Did you go back to it? Yeah, let me. Make sure you close your tags, all that stuff. Already got it. Thank you. All right. So we need one more thing down here. We basically need our elements that are going to actually say what the mood is. So we're going to add something else. Um, we'll do H4. Um, and then we're going to add a span and set the ID to tweet exhibits text. And then in here, we want to reference um, something in our Pi file. So to do that in Flask, you basically enclose it in curly brackets and then put the variable name. So we're going to have a variable called um, tweet exhibits text. Because um, basically, when they haven't entered something yet, um, let me pull it up. So we don't want it to say anything yet. But once they analyze it, we want it to say this tweet has this mood in it and then display the mood. So we can basically have the text be empty um, until they actually click the button. So that's what this does. So that'll load whatever text we create for that from our Pi file. Um, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so we just want to close all these tags now. H4 and center. And then lastly, do a break. This will be where um, we're actually going to display the mood. So we're going to do ID equals mood. And then same as just above, we'll have a variable called mood. And then close those tags. So this should be all the HTML we need. So you want to save it. So how is this reference the, the, the model? Um, so since it's all in the same folder and we're going to run it with Flask, it just knows to look for curly brackets and that anything in that is actually like Python code related. If you have multiple file. Um, so basically, it knows that this is the main file for the app. So if you have anything like this, it'll always look for a variable with this name within this. And if you save this and then run it, you'll see that nothing. Er, that's interesting. Oh, it's because we haven't set it yet. OK, so we'll show this at first, um, but I'll show you how to make that go away. Um, so you should see this right now. Sorry. You mentioned like tweet x space text is the variable, um, is it? But it's not in our model, right? Yeah, we we haven't created it yet, so that's going to be the next thing. Oh, okay, cool. We haven't created that or the mood part, so. So does everyone have this? Okay, I'll give everyone a second here. So Matt, the ID here, um, are those all the variables? Um, so the ID is something we can reference. Um, we don't actually end up referencing the ID, but it's nice to just add one in case we need to reference this element in our Pi, in case okay. we'd want to you know, change the text of it like dynamically or something. Um, 
the way that I think about it. It's kind of like a variable for the HTML file. Mm -hmm. And also if you want to add like CSS and kind of change the style around, then you can reference things by the ID. Got it. Which you can do. We're not going to do any CSS tonight, but you could include CSS in this HTML file or have a separate one and basically load it in. I think Juliet got it working, right? <laughs> All right. What about JavaScript? Would you be able to run any yep. JavaScript? You, you can do everything you can normally do for a website using HTML5. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And then you can do anything you can do with Python. So it's really powerful. Um, all right, so we'll go back to our app. Um, so right now, we're just rendering the template here um, for home, for our home page, with um, nothing passed in. So this, on the return render template, is where we actually pass in those variables that we created. So here we want to set mood equals an empty string and then also tweet exhibits text equals an empty string. So now we're going to save that file. And we're going to go to the terminal now. So you'll want to be in the folder. And then I hope this works on Mac the same, but it's going to be Python hyphen M flask and then run. So Python hyphen M flask run. Matt, can I see your sublime window just for a second? Yep. So this is what we added here. Okay. So if you go ahead and run this code, Why is mine not running? I got an error saying that it couldn't import session. Um, did you import TensorFlow first? Yes. Oh, could not import name pad sequence. I think it's pad sequences. Yeah. Is it? And this will take a second here. Matt, do you mind <laughs> screwing up? Can yeah, one second. Um, so basically, if it's working, you'll see this running on um, and then a web address. So that's how you know it's working. But I think we're going to have to troubleshoot some things. Um, so Bonnie, this is what we ran. Python. I got an error again. What yeah. errors are we getting? Oh. Uh, Why importing app and import error was raised. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, tokenizer includes. Cannot import pad sequence. I changed it. Oh, because I can save it. Save. Click on M. Um, Ooh, I got a little why. Unable to open file. Uh, no such file directory mode model JSON. <laughs> I think it sounds like everybody's getting errors. Um, so let's just go down the line. Julia, what does yours say? Um, it says no such file mood model JSON, even though I am there and I'm inside of. Okay, so you're inside your tweet mood analyzer folder. Yes. And you see mood model JSON, mood model H5, and mood tokenizer. Let me just make sure. Mood model, oh, dot JSON? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I must have done it wrong here. Okay. Hold on. Beth, did yours work? Um, no. So I was running it in Git 
git bash and I was getting the error cannot import session and then I moved over to the command prompt and now I'm getting no module named Keras. So I guess okay. another one. I, so I, you I, might have to do pip install Keras then in your terminal. Yeah. I got cannot import name session from TensorFlow. Yep, so if you get any of those errors, just do pip install, do TensorFlow first, if you don't have it already, and then pip install Keras. Should I do that in a command line? Yeah, just in your command line. And just rerun the whole thing? Um, yeah, just, uh, well, if, yeah, just save the file and then rerun that up. Python slash dash M flask run. Julia, did yours work? It is currently running. Okay. Has anybody gotten this at the bottom running on web address? Not, not yet. <clears throat> I got the same TensorFlow uh, sessions error. Okay. Yeah, you'll want to install TensorFlow and then Keras just in your command line, the same spot. I already imported TensorFlow, but I still got the error message. Well, this is just importing it. You might not have it installed at that location because you might just have it in your learn environment. Mm -hmm. Which you could, you could switch to your learn environment technically. You'd have to install Flask again there. Um, I installed it in my terminal. Uh, what do you mean? Um, yeah, I, I just did the same thing. I just pip install both. Uh, did TensorFlow. Keras was already there, but it still gave me the same error for session. Me too. And what does it say? While well, importing app, an import error was raised. Um, and then it's got from TensorFlow import graph comma session cannot import session from TensorFlow. Is it because we renamed TensorFlow TF? Mm, if you have it in this order, it should still work. Let's just do some digging here real quick. Um, Looking this. So my error message looks like this. <clears throat> yeah. That's what my that's what mine is too, Bonnie. Um, can you go to your Jupyter notebook and do um, import TensorFlow and then, oops, then we're going to check the version of it. So do TensorFlow dot underscore underscore version, I think. Yeah. Should 
2.1.0. Okay. Um, yeah. So try and do, what's the syntax? Um, pip install specific version. Okay. So you'll want to go to your terminal, do pip uninstall. Is that the right thing? Pip uninstall. Yeah. Yeah, pip uninstall TensorFlow. And then you're going to do pip install TensorFlow. And we want this version. TensorFlow equals equals 1.10.0. I could not find a version. Does it have to be in quotes? Mm. Could not find yeah. that version. Let's see. The earliest that I can get is 1.13. Try that maybe. Same best. I think it I think it needs to be in quotes. Oh yeah, TensorFlow version two does not have session anymore. So as long as you can get an earlier one, it might work. Okay. I was able to get 1.13.1. .1. Okay, go ahead and try that out then. And if that works, then everybody else can do that same thing. Seems to work. Yeah, it's working. Cool. Okay, What's so anybody who the number one point thirteen point one. Thank you. All right, so did that fix it for everyone then? Is anyone else still not able to get this to show at the bottom running on this web address? Got it. Cool. I got that one, but also got error in app. <laughs> What's the error, sir? <laughs> it's a long error. Good response equals self for dispatch request. I don't know. That's a very long error message. Let's try to keep going if you got this. So basically copy this URL. This is where the app is going to be hosted locally. So copy that, copy that URL, paste it in your browser, and Evo server is overloaded. And could someone post in the chat how they, the command for uninstalling and reinstalling TensorFlow? Sure. I got the similar things. Similar. Yeah. I got, I got oh, I see. Are you posting the TensorFlow stuff, Bonnie? What? Are you posting the TensorFlow stuff? Uh, the I install one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Matt, what are we supposed to do once we get um, running on the link? So, You'll actually have to add this that I'm adding here to the app.py. So since we declared that analyze tweet here, URL for that, we actually need to declare it in our py file before we can run it. Okay. Um, so you'll just add another app.route um, with that endpoint we created and then the methods you want post. And then we're going to make a function in here called analyze tweet 
which we'll create in a second. Um, but for now, just return the same thing as this uh, home one. So it should look like this and then go ahead and save that. And then we need to kill that initial process, right? Yeah, you'll probably have to close that command line and open a new one. And then once you've added this second part here, then do that python-m flask run. And this time it should work and give you that URL that you can actually go to. Yep, there you go. So once you post it in the, your uh, browser, you should see our web page. You go back to the app, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the error say that long thing? Um, on the web pages, I say server encountered an internal error. And I didn't see an error, error message from terminal yet. Um, just close everything. Go back to your app file, save it. Make sure this looks exactly the same. And then go back to your command line, a new window of it, and run that Python line again. Okay, let me see. I'm still getting an internal service error. Beth, do you want to share your screen? Um, give me one second. Is it because whenever I'm trying to copy paste this website, I'm exiting it? It might be. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. Because that's the command C is the hotkey to close the process, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you're in the, the command line and you ran Flask, if you hit command C or control C, it'll basically kill it. Yeah. Uh. So don't do that. <laughs> um, I'm I'm getting an internal server error. Mm -hmm. Probably the same thing. But I'm I'm in it. I didn't quit it, and I changed everything. Can you share your screen? Mm -hmm. I had to uh, restart Flask, rerun Flask. Oh, it's working now. Oh, cool. What do I need to do then? 
<laughs> yeah, so just close the browser, close the terminal. So I quit this then. Yep. But you have to close the browser too? Like uh, X out might, of everything? You might not have to do that too. I just always say to close everything just in case. And close all of this stuff too? No, keep that open. Now just open a new command line. I have like 15 tabs open that I need. Oh no, not the whole browser, just the, the tab. Okay. Uh, just mine, the tab that you opened the server on. Mine is still not working again. Oh, I forgot what it is now. So uh, just go to your folder. Oh, oh yeah. My bad. Yeah. I don't Arg. You have to go to course materials first, maybe. Oh, there you go. And tweet mood analyzer. Okay. And so now I'm in it. So now do Python dash M um, flask run. Should take a second to spin up. Okay. And then copy that. And you have an iPhone. Are there people still getting that? Go back to your terminal. Did it add anything? I think it's with that. This your CPU supports instructions that this TensorFlow binary was not able to use. It might be because of the computer you're on. Mine worked with the AVX2. Huh? Did it? Uh, yeah, like that. That showed up on mine too. But it still uh, worked then. Yeah, but not the FMA. Uh, okay. That could be something to do with it. Um, you'll still be able to host it and it should work on Heroku. So if anyone else is getting that error, just continue along. And once we upload it to Heroku, then you should be able to see it still. You just won't be able to see it locally yet. All right. So let me share my screen again. We just have a couple more things to do. So let me share this. All right, so we're in our app.py. So we've created this analyze tweet function and we're able to return the mood and return the tweet exhibits, exhibits text. And basically what happens is when somebody enters text into that text box and hits uh, analyze, this method will be called. So the first thing to do is to get the tweet itself. So we need to do tweet equals, and then we're gonna want it in a list because that's the format it needs to be to pass it into the tokenizer. Um, so you're going to do str to make sure it's a string. And then you're going to do request.form. And then actually, this is where we reference that ID, so the tweet um, that we made in the HTML. So that will get us the tweet that they entered, and we'll have it in string format. This next part is going to be copied from the notebook we were working on. It's basically going to be this labels line and then the encoded and padded tweet lines. So you'll need those three lines if you just want to copy and paste them. So we have our list of labels, we encode the tweet and then we pad it. Now we have to do the prediction. Since we're doing things weirdly with TensorFlow, this is going to look different too. We're going to do k.setSession, pass in session1, then with graph1.asDefault. Then we're going to actually make our prediction. So we'll do preds equals model.predictProba. 
and then pass in the padded tweet. And then below that, we'll just do mood equals our labels. And then we'll get the highest value out of those probabilities. So np.argmax, get the index of that. And we'll just pass in preds. So that should give us just the string value of whatever mood um, had the highest value in those probabilities. So that's all the stuff we need in there. That gets us our prediction from whatever tweet they enter. Now we just have to return that down here to connect it to our HTML. So we want mood equals mood. And then for tweet exhibits text, this is just what we want it to say. So you could just be like this tweet exhibits colon. So this will go like above the mood. Because you can see on the home page, we just have them as blank so that they don't show up. But then once someone has submitted something and we get a prediction, then we give them values and it'll load into the HTML. All right, so if you just save everything, make sure the HTML and the app are saved. And then for those of you that it's working, um, you can do control C if you want, um, or just close and open a new command line. And we're basically gonna, gonna run it again and make sure it works. You just slide it over so I can get that last line. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. There we go. So you'll just do the Python M flask run again. It should go through everything. And then you'll copy the URL there. We're gonna put it in. So you can put in something I am feeling on top of the world. Analyze and something broke. So now if we go back to our command line, it should give us an error. And this is important. Um, if you ever see blast gem launch failed or anything similar, it probably means you had an instance of TensorFlow already open or running. So basically I had that notebook open from before and TensorFlow was still connected to that. So what I have to do is shut down that other Jupyter notebook instance that I was using and shut down the command line that's running it too. And then if I go back to my page here, enter the tweet and do analyze, it might work this time. No, I keep getting internal server error connected panels. Could you speak up? Sorry, I couldn't hear that. I keep getting an internal server error every time I click analyze. Um, did you close your Jupyter notebook that you're running? Oh, I'll have to. Mine says something different. What's Mine it say? It says um, K is not defined. Um, if you go up to your imports, let's see, imp from Keras import backend is K. And it was lowercase. <laughs> There's My a lot of syntax issues to be had with all this. Mine is all of a sudden like open, not like before when I put up the, the which we'll call it the site but then i hit analyze and then nothing happens <laughs> Everything yeah happens. Same. does your command line have anything does no no a bunch of like templates are not found like an error mine doesn't say errors or anything it just disappear right yeah it just goes away oh whoops this should be np so um You'll want to change import numpy as before it was numpy, numpy like this. You just want it to be np because that's what we reference it as. Bless you. All right, so document slash tweet mood analyzer and then Python. Oh, 
Okay. So now this is what it should look like. It should, once you hit analyze, it should say this tweet exhibits and then the mood. So what errors are we getting? Just don't see anything. And you saved your app.py? Yeah. And you made sure on the return render template um, for the analyze tweet function, you put mood equals mood, and you gave this text. Mm -hmm. Mine is working now after I changed NumPy to NP, but I don't see that text. It just says joy. <laughs> um, so double check the HTML. So it should have it in brackets, mood in brackets. Make sure that's saved. Can I share my screen, Sue? Yeah. So this is my app hi dog. Okay, mood equals. I'll just double check. And I did import um, numpy as mp. Okay, that looks good. Go to your HTML. That looks good as well. Go to your command line. Close it and open a new one. And then go to your folder and run the Python line again. Juliet, did you do anything special to get that one error to go away? No, I just changed the NumPy to MP and I had tweet instead of text, so now I'm checking it again. Mm -hmm. still not working um when i click analyze i'm not sure what errors i just keep saying template is not found um if you go to your templates folder what do you see i have forum helpers uh 404 about base and home and is home a dot html file yep Okay, and then see if I enter something here, I feel great. Analyze nothing. Hmm. And here it says. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting to that point. So go back to your HTML. Editor.html. Is that a file we should have? Um, which file? Header.html. Um, no, that shouldn't be one you need. That's that's I think that's the only one that's not found. It just says header.html. Um and where is that being called from? I have no idea. Go back to your app.py, Bonnie. Uh, there's an app after request to find add header. Were we supposed to get rid of that? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. I don't see that in here. Okay, that might be it. Analyze tweet template home. Oh, Bonnie, did you make sure you saved the home.html to the right place? Do save as. Do I need to save as all the time? And then double click on templates to save it there.
And then uh, reload everything. Uh, And that one should just be in the main folder. Save, place. Okay, let me run again. Do I need to close it off? Yep. Okay, let's do this again. Has anyone got it to work successfully? Cool, okay. As long as a couple people have. <laughs> well, try an active one. I tried an active tweeze and it does not give, it still give me joy in the, in, in the notebook. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but. Okay. Let's put this sucks and it returned fear. <laughs> Yeah, I still can't get past that internal error. I've closed everything. And you closed your other notebook. and okay. Yeah. And there's no output in the terminal that gives you any clue, any logs. Okay. Nah. Oh, great. Yours might work in... Let's see if oh, yours yay. works in Heroku then. All right, Bonnie's works. It works, thanks. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to connect it to Heroku and see if that fixes issues. If it doesn't work there, then there's something else going on. But um, that should be good. Serena, is yours working? Which part are you at? It's the internal server error, like when I um, grab the URL. OK. All right, well, maybe we'll figure that out here. But let's uh, go on then to Heroku and uploading it there. Um, so let's see, we want to go to Heroku. Um, so if you created an account, you'll want to just sign in. Let me share my screen. So let's go to the home page. So if you go to dashboard.heroku.com, this should bring up your list of apps, which none of you probably have any yet. Um, this is one that I tested out earlier to make sure this all works. Um, so we're going to click new. So create new app. And then we need to give it a name. I think they're all unique. So you'll probably want to put like some unique identifier. Oh, and there's no underscores, so it has to be dashes. So you can call it something and then just click Create App. Then you should see the screen here. We're going to, under deployment method, click connect to GitHub. You might have to sign in here. I'm not sure what it looks like if you're not connected already. Someone might have to tell me. Or these might just come up. Just authorize Heroku and confirm the password. Yep. Let me say that I'm remembering that password. So once you get this to come up, you'll want to enter your repo name. So um, tweet mood analyzer, I think is what I called it. Search for it. There we go. It should pop up below. Click connect. And you should get some extra stuff to pop up down here. You can click this enable automatic deploys if you want any time you push changes to your repo for it to automatically update in Heroku too and pull from that. Otherwise, you can always just come here and do manual deploy. Um, so don't do anything yet. Now we have to go to our terminal and we have to push up the changes and all the stuff we just did. So you'll want to go to the folder um, tweet mood. Running it then, right? What? You stop running it then, right? Yeah, you can stop running it. So you just want to go to the folder. You want to do git add and then do a dot. This will add all the files that have changes to them, which should be every single file because our repo didn't have anything in it to begin with. 
So that'll add all the files. Then we're going to do git commit. Actually, I forgot one important thing. We need to go to our tweet mood analyzer and open the requirements file. This is the one last thing you have to have. So this is basically a list of all the Python libraries that you're going to be using as well. Um, so I'll just tell you what you need to put here. Um, so we need Keras and we need this particular version, 2.2.4. We need Keras underscore preprocessing version 1.1.0. We need TensorFlow and we want 1.7.0. And then we want the pickle library, which for some reason is referenced by pixel hyphen mixin. And then we want numpy. So those are all the uh, libraries we're using in our Python related stuff. Um, this down here, Gunicorn and Gavent, those are basically um, web related. Um, you don't have to really touch them though, it's all set up. Um, to do all that stuff, um, but you just want to have all these lines here and then make sure you save this file. And these are the minimum requirements for it to run, right? Yeah, yep. Okay. So basically anytime the app deploys, it makes sure that it has all these requirements before it allows it to be deployed. So save that and then we're going to we'll keep it up there. We'll go back to our terminal, do get add dot again, just to make sure that requirements got added. And then we're going to do git commit hyphen M. And then we just want a message. So initial um, work or tweet mood analyzer flask app. So do that that commits all your work, then all you have to do is do git push and that should push it up to the repo. Which might take a second because it's uploading all those files. And when that's all done, if you hit enable automatic deploys, it should have kicked off something. If not, you'll just click deploy branch on Heroku. And then you should get something loading down here. It's basically going to take a few minutes to build everything to install um, all those dependencies and make sure everything's working. And this usually takes like two to three minutes uh, so it's always like fingers crossed that everything works because if not, we have to change stuff and then wait again for this all to load. Who push failed? Push failed. Um, what else does it say? Invalid requirement TensorFlow 1.7.0. It's probably a typo. Yeah, I'll bring it back up here. Oh, yeah, it's my temple. So you should get something like successfully built, successfully installed. And then the last thing is going to be compressing. So one thing about this, everything has to be under 500 megabytes. If it's over that, you can't deploy it on Heroku, um, which kind of sucks if you have like really large files or something. Um, if you have a lot of you know extra web-based stuff, pictures and things, um, but we're at about 188 megabytes with what we have here. All right, so it should say it's been deployed um, and you can actually copy that URL. That's what you go to to basically see your app. So you can copy that paste it in a new window. It'll probably take a second or two, and you'll notice this happens if you haven't loaded the web page every once in a while. Um, it's just a thing about Heroku. It, it basically kills it if it hasn't been ran in a while. And then once you go to it again, it has to spin everything up. So 
probably take a second or two here. All right, so you should see the page and then we wanna test the analyzing part. And it looks like it worked there, so that's good. So I'm curious if Serena's and Jacob's works in Heroku. <laughs> Matt, can you try um, enter another tweet? <laughs> Anger. <laughs> okay, so it worked. Yeah. Mine's a fail. It failed? What does it say? Uh, same with mine. If you go to activity, um, you should be able to see the the build log, something like this. I can kind of pinpoint what's wrong. It's probably a typo or syntax thing. Mine says build failed. I actually know mine deployed, but I still get that error when I click analyze. Mm. Okay, then it's something locally. So Anubhav, can you share your screen? Um, Jacob, the, in your pre-process or your requirements, do you have hyphens or do you have equals equals? Okay, let's see. Takes a long time to load that page. Yep. All right, I know I'm going to scan through this and see um, back end graph session model from JSON. Um, okay, top part looks good on the app dot pi. Let me see. Return your template. Scroll down a little bit. Okay, that all looks good. Let me look at the HTML. Okay, that looks fine. Go back to the pi file. Oh wait, it's right there. Go up to the top though. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, go to your requirements. I did just get like a bunch of emails saying my TensorFlow is less than 1.7.0. Um, see, go to your just like finder. Let me just see the project like folder. Delete that um, other home file in your templates, yeah. The, the only issue is because when I change it to HTML, it like reformats the file, so I can't change any of the code afterwards. Can I just like move it somewhere else? Yeah, and then try opening the home.html there. Okay, that looks fine. All right, go to your terminal then. Make sure your Jupyter notebook and everything's closed. And then you're in that folder, so just do the Python dash M flask run. And while he's loading that, um, is anyone else having issues on Heroku? I have an application error. Like on the browser when you click on analyze? the browser. Or? Okay. 
Do you see anything, any other errors or? Um, and let me check my logs for details, but I don't know how to open the Heroku command line. Uh, I'll show you in a second. I'm going to go to your terminal real quick. I see, like, I see. Template not found. What is, oh wait, so flask templating.py. Weird. Go back to that folder. Make a copy of the about.html and call it headers or uh, header.html. A copy of it? Mm hmm. Oh, actually. Delete everything except home HTML and keep form helpers though. And then try and run everything back up. Okay, Bonnie um, on Heroku, if you go to, um, if you're on your overview, and then you go to up at the top as open app and more, click more, and then run console. Wait, 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 wait. wait that did, never mind, that, that won't work. Um, let's see, activity, metrics, resources. But yours worked locally, Bonnie, right? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> so many issues with all this. It's really hard to troubleshoot. Um, so I see the build log and the last line is deploy to, with the link deploy to Heroku. Do not see any error message. Um, give me a second on that. Um, Anubhav, go to re-download the folder from the repo and put those files back in, like the base about 404 HTML, put all those back and then just keep your home in there. So like replace the other ones or put them back in. I feel like something got changed. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so... Bonnie, do you want to, can you copy and paste your requirements in the chat, maybe? Requirement? Mm-hmm. You have to download the whole thing, I think, and then just take out those files. Yeah, so I was able to see the log, but the log didn't see any, didn't say anything. The, the, like nothing at all or nothing helpful? Um, well, the last one I, the last line I saw is this. Like launching. Okay. That's just on the building. Um, try and go back to it again and try and analyze a tweet. Oh, okay. Wait. <laughs> and then check your terminal. Template not found. Okay, let me double check something real quick. 
and I, I took that like function out as well for the header. And in your folder, it's called templates, right? Okay. This <clears throat> Can I just ask a quick question? Sure. After the git push, am I supposed to do anything in the terminal? Um, no, that should be everything in the terminal. Okay. Then you should be able to go on to Heroku and hit deploy branch. Yeah, no, it says push failed. Okay. What error does it give? Um, push rejected, failed to compile Python app, and then push failed. Does it mention like any libraries in particular? Installing requirements of pip, connecting flask, could not find a version that satisfies the requirements. Grass 2.24. Okay, um, check your requirements. I have 2.24, is that the, not the number? Does it, in the chat, does it say this? Let me see. Oh, 2.2. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> uh, Jacob, I was looking at your error. I have no idea on that. Um, I would just double check the requirements again here under the flask. This is what the requirements should be. Uh, yeah, you don't need Keras twice. It just looks like it because I had already posted that. Okay. Mine was working, and that now it's failed. Does it say anything? Um, it says to check my logs. Are you, do you know where to go to check the logs? No, I missed it. Um, Bonnie, can you tell her? Is it from activity? Yep, and then what? Build log. Uh, where it says view build log? Yeah. So there's nothing after the website information. Same, me. it's same for me. I try to deploy again and see if it changes anything. All right, so I have mine on GitHub. So I'm going to post the link in chat. If yours isn't working locally, um, go ahead and clone my repo and try to run the Flask app from there locally. Because that should have everything how it's supposed to be. Um, if that still doesn't work, then it's probably something with your computer itself. Um, Matt, can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Yep. But it's still showing that I have um, 2.24, and I fixed it, and I saved it in the requirements as 2.24. Um, but it's still showing here my error that that's my error. How do I? So you have to push it up to GitHub then too. So, but by doing git push, right? Yeah, but you'll have to do, so git add and then dot. That mm -hmm. adds all the files, then git commit. Oh, good. And then git push. 
Yep. Okay. Do I need to write after anything after commit? Um, do dash M and then in quotes put a commit message, just anything. All right, Bonnie's is working. Yeah. Beth, does yours work if you reload it? Um, if I deploy again? Uh, just if you go back to the app, like reload the page. Um, no, <laughs> I've actually gone back and reopen the page like six times after as soon as I analyze the tweet it fails. I don't know if there's like a limit on how many times you can do it. I've done it like 20 times. I Wait, what's it say? I can't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's reached its limit. Oh, that's because you must have turned on the automatic so it's probably already deploying. So if you go to deploy tab and then, or no, go to activity. And then it should say like it's building. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if automatic's on there, it'll just do it as soon as it detects changes. Okay. Almost Anubhav, is it still loading? Did you click analyze? Yeah, it still doesn't work. I still get this like template not found. Should I, should I just uh, take your repo, like download? Yeah, take my repo and just uh, run it out of there. Heroic button. Should I stop sharing as well? Yeah, you can stop sharing. Okay. And mine works again. <laughs> that is weird. I've been going through and analyzing my own personal Twitter feed. Is it giving any interesting results? So the reason why I have a Twitter is for networking. So anytime that I go to an event for education or anything like that, a professional development, I basically live tweet the event. And so far there have been like two tweets that express joy. The rest of them are fear, guilt, shame. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> that, that is interesting. You could set up a loop and like analyze a bunch of people's like collection of tweets and determine their like overall mood. Yeah, like the organization takes time but gives you freedom to focus on what really matters. Fits out shame. <laughs> Are you running this in your Jupyter book? No, I'm running it on the Heroku app. Heroku, okay. I'm sorry. Now, once it's actually done, what where do I go? <laughs> Um, so you're on Heroku. You can click open app up at the top. Okay. And then you can also just note the like URL. So it should be your uh, name for the app and then .herokuapp.com. Yeah. yeah, you can also find the website in the settings page. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, if anyone else is having issues, just clone my repo here, Tweet Mood Analyzer. Um, I put it in the chat. Try to run it locally, that should work. Um, and then you can also just try and push that up to your own repo and then connect that to Heroku if your Heroku is not working. I think the app is really unstable. I try to enter a longer tweet and it doesn't work. Um, so there's probably a length. Um, what was it? 146. 46. Is that what you said? 256. Oh, 256. Well, I mm. copied Andrew Kumo, Kumo's tweet and paste here. <laughs> I copied this here. Um, we found potential security vulnerabilities in your dependencies, and it says it's joy. <laughs> How do you know it's a computer? Okay, so the next challenge I have for you guys then, if you want to keep messing around with this, you saw how I broke it down to have like the percentages. So I want you to add that here. So have it display, you know, the percentages. And if you're feeling fancy with the HTML, you know, say something like this tweet has 97% joy. Uh, you know, get creative with it. 
you can do more with HTML to make it a more interesting web page. But um, now that you have everything connected, you should be able to just change the HTML and push things up and have it be reflected. <laughs> Andrew tried, I love you guys, and it said discuss. Let me try that here. <laughs> oh my god, it finally worked. Did it work? Yeah, I just copied whatever. I don't know what is wrong with the, my files. It's just really finicky, and there's so many pieces. Like, if one thing's off, it just it ruins the whole thing. Um, and it's really hard to debug. That's why you just need a template like this. And then anytime you want to make a new one, just copy this exactly and change it piece by piece. Um, as for the Roku link, mm -hmm. uh, updating our GitHub repo, will it update what happens on the link as well? Um, we have to like redeploy it. So if you click enable automatic deploys, then every time you push up new changes, it'll just grab it and start building right away. Otherwise you can turn it off and then go to deploy branch on here whenever you want to do something new, have an update. So yeah, that's basically how to put a, a machine learning model into production. Um, there's a lot of other ways to get it up onto a website. There's other um, things like Flask, um, like Django. Um, that's a big popular one too. There's also other sites besides Heroku. You could technically put this on any like web hosting platform. This one's just easiest to do out of the box. Um, but so I would suggest strongly if your capstone in any way has some kind of interactive element um, to put up something like this for it. Um, it look really cool on your portfolio. It gives people something to actually go to. You can put the link on your resume even. Um, I'd also suggest having like a portfolio website too, if you feel like making one, that can be really powerful. Um, and then also any of the previous projects that we did, if you have some kind of element that you could do something like this for, that would be cool as well. Um, Cause yeah, an employer seeing that you're able to do this side of things as well is really strong that you can't not just do the analysis stuff and building models, but you know actually how to deploy it. Um, Cause in the end, a lot of machine learning stuff needs, you know, customers and people to interact with, you know, it's a commercial thing. Um, so it's a really good skill to have. Does anyone have any questions on anything we did tonight? I know it's probably a lot to, to get through, but um, you can this always reach out. This is so fun and <laughs> open a new door, I felt. Yeah, no, it kind of brings things full circle because it's, you know, now you can actually share your stuff. Like you can make a website like my lyric writer thing, like send it to your friends and family. Like now you have something to kind of show off. You don't have to pull up a Jupyter notebook and, you know, have it look all scary, you can make it look more presentable and as something cool to them, I guess. So for your lyric writer, it's, it's still running on a free um, Heroku, right? Yep. Pay any? Okay. Nope, it's just on a free. And then I just, I have like a portfolio site and I just link it on there. So like your URL, it looks kind of ugly because it has Heroku app in it, but if you have like your own personal portfolio website with like your own custom URL, then having this link off of it is, doesn't look as bad, I guess. Um, but yeah, and I can go to my code actually, if you want to see it's lyric writer. So this is the app file for the lyric writer. So you'll notice I have two models. Um, so I had to duplicate that. I have some functions up at the top that I use later on just to make it more OOP. Um, and then I only have the one uh, route here, but you actually can create other pages. So you can do, um, you know, like an about or whatever you want um, off of this main URL. 
see how it has like generate lyrics. So you can make like a multi-page site if you wanted to. Alrighty, well, we are a little over time, so <laughs> should probably wrap it up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, reach out on Slack. Um, again, I uploaded it to GitHub here, um, and I'll post it in Slack um, just so you have it um, and use that as reference. But yeah, hopefully this helps you guys, and definitely try to do it for your capstone if you can. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.